there and welcome to my channel. This is Christy with Art of Awakening and I'm going to do um, today just kind of a channel painting video. Um, lately, I usually when I work I've got, usually I have YouTube on, um, you know, just whatever, whatever wants to come on because it's on auto and um, the other day this beautiful music came on. It was Tchaikovsky's uh, Hymn of the Cherubim. And it really struck me. I mean, it really moved me all to tears. I mean, it, it was just very moving. And so I started listening to it over and over and over again. Um, it comes from a, a longer piece of his. It's made up of a bunch of little pieces called the, the Liturgy of St. John somebody or other. So, uh, so I've got that playing in the background right now. Um, but what it did was, I think, you know, sometimes the music, well, music and art, they all carry the energy, energy within it. And in this case, Tchaikovsky was definitely channeling the cherubim. I didn't know a lot, a lot about cherubim. Usually you hear about, you know, you see the little cherubs and they're very cute and quaint. Little Victorian cherubs, little babies with wings. Well, so, you know, after I've been listening to this for a while, and it was really, I mean, I could feel a lot of shifts happening in my field from this music. Uh, so I got curious, and I started looking up, what are the cherubim? And I found so some very interesting kind of mythology around that. Um, they, they, they appear in various ways, depending on different traditions. Um, and sometimes they are like the, 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 the babies. Um, but they're an order of angels. They're supposed to be just below the seraphim. And you can look them up, but... One of the things that I found was that they're not always showing up as babies. Um, and in one account, they show up as these four-faced angels that guard the Garden of Eden. And and they're they're so bright you can't even look at them. They're they're very, very powerful. And so after I'd read that, you know, I was going around the life and then they just said, draw me. <laughs> so that this is a painting that's kind of coming out of that sketch that I did. I did a sketch in my journal around that um, after they asked me to draw them. <laughs> so this is a cherub. Probably not like any cherub you've ever seen before. But with the four faces, the idea is that they can go in any direction without turning. So they're they're really focused, right? And no matter what direction they're going. And kind of I'm getting a few things out of this number four. Well, first of all, the, the idea of guarding the Garden of Eden. Um, and I'm assuming I didn't, I'd have to go back and read it, but this would have been probably after the fall. Um, and by the way, you know, I, I think all all traditions all spiritual traditions are beautiful and they all have truth in them so i'm not like you know you don't have to be christian to appreciate this i i really love myth of all kinds wherever it comes from so um but yeah i love the symbolism of the garden of eden because i think that's coming up a lot lately for a lot of people the dog here get a dog here out of there because really, I think with the shift that's happening right now on the planet, it's really, I think the idea is, you know, we're going to be returning to that state, that state. And, and maybe that's part of what the cherubs are about when they appear as young children or babies, because that's a state of innocence and a state of, um, you know, the Garden of Eden represents really that primal... Um, state before corruption happens and we see that like in nature nature left alone 
that would be the Garden of Eden before it got messed with. And it's still there. It is still there. Like every time you go out in the woods or go in nature, there it is. It's right there. It's, 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 we've never left it. We just have left it in our minds, right? I mean, there's been some systematic destroying of it. But I think, you know, if we start focusing on that destruction, then we only feed into it. So yes, it's we need to be aware of it, and we may need to take steps away from that destruction, you know, whatever we can do. But it's it's super important because I know a lot of people who are concerned about the, the earth. They really focus on that destruction, and 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 they get all emotional. I mean, like the like I understand because I feel that way, you know. I, I, I love the earth and I'm, I, I love nature and I don't want to see it destroyed and it's very upsetting. Um, but when you start feeling all this despair around it, um, that just, honestly, the emotions are what we create with. And when we start creating a lot of despair around des the destruction of nature, I mean, that, that honestly feeds into it. So I think part of what this is about, what they're saying here, is, you know, first of all, fear not. <laughs> you know, that's what the angels always say. They say, fear not. Right? Um, and so, you know, there is this, like, yes, we're here, we've never left it. But, on the other hand, there's also the sense of guarding it, right? Of, of not being able to enter. And what is that? It's like, It's, it's transcending the ego because we're never going to actually really, like we're always here, it's always there. It, it, we've never left it, but, but we think we have, right? The ego has left it. Our soul hasn't left it, right? Our, our higher self. Or it's always been available to us. We could step into it at any time we want. But our ego has left it. And... So the idea is, it's like, I really get this, like the wings in this thing. Um, they're like swords. They're like very sharp swords. They're like razor sharp. And I'm not, this isn't blood. <laughs> this is more like flames, right? So it's flames I'm getting and sword like, you know, in the wings themselves. And what it's really saying is like, you know, you need to, you're going to have to be pure enough, <laughs> like, pure enough to pass this, right? To pass through it. And that is what is happening right now with us. And we're getting there, I think, a lot of us are getting there. And we're getting there, you know, the earth is getting there and, and collectively as human beings we're getting there and it's not as impossible as I'm making it sound because they have this heart right the cherub has this beautiful heart and loves us and is very compassionate and wants us to get through really so it's not like this guardian that's 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 you know against us it's this guardian that's for us and the reason they're guarding it is that they want us to be happy and We've already, you know, proved that you can't go in the Garden of Eden and not, like, you, you've got to be aligned, right, in order to see it for what it is and to enter. Um, and so it's, it's really just a visual reminder that we can, we can go back, we are going back, we're already there, we've never left it. And that all this purification that we've been doing, every light worker that I know, every star seed that I know, has gone through a lot. And even if it's not in this lifetime, if you're aware enough to be watching this and to have followed me this, this far, you've had significant trauma in whether it's past lives or this life. Um, so they're saying, you know, you're doing good work. The 
that you're almost there. If you've gotten to this point of seeing this apparition, <laughs> that you're almost in, like you're, you're, you're on the threshold, or maybe you're even in and you don't, like, like I said, we don't even know it. Um, so this is the last, this is the last little bit that these represent. Okay. And actually, even if you feel like you're completely not at the threshold, at, at, spending time with like this image will help to get you there because this is the threshold right um i hope i'm making sense because i'm just sort of saying what's coming through and i'm using a couple different parts of my brain right now so <laughs> it's uh it, it tends to get a little more scrambled than it should but but i i think i i've just been guided that you know doing this along with the painting they're speaking through it and even though I'm an imperfect translator they're still asking me to do it and maybe that's part of the lesson like you, you don't have to be perfect in order to be pure enough to get there I think that's a big part of the lesson like I'm certainly not being a wonderful channel right now <laughs> I'm just not you know it's it's all convoluted and it's all but they're saying it's okay, do it anyway. So part of what the message is, is if you're feeling called to share your experiences or share your insights or share, you know, if you have insights or wisdom that you're being called or, you know, your attention is being drawn to, it will it will help other people. Um, so they're saying, you know, don't don't feel like you're not good enough even if you haven't arrived yet, because you are good enough. You're more than good enough. You are perfect. And the only reason we feel we're not perfect is that we're on this creative journey all together collectively as a human race. This is a creative journey that we're on. And creation, the act of creation, <laughs> if you've ever given birth, you know it gets messy and it gets painful. But that's what they're saying, though, is like, you know, you, you are perfect. And whatever you're going through, it's not a reflection of your imperfection. It's a reflection of, I'm getting reflections here, this is like water, water, pool of fire or something. Um, it's a reflection of your divine journey, is what it is. So part of the lesson is gratitude. Deep gratitude, this is the heart here, heart of it. They showed me this beautiful flaming heart in the center. And if you see in the center, there's a heart and there's flames coming out of the heart too, and flames all around. But if you're in the heart, and I see almost this little childlike image coming up. From the heart. And right there in the heart, you're safe. It's a safety zone. Okay, so being in the middle, like this number four, four faces, you can't see the other face because I have to, <laughs> I'm not doing this in two dimensions. But it's, it's a four-faced angel, and four is a number that is associated with the angels, with the archangels. It's a very powerful number. It stands for, uh, it represents like solidity and stability and, you know, security, safety, amongst other things. Um, and so, so this is touching on the idea of faith and trust is trusting like if you've been drawn to watch this something drew you there you were listening to your higher self you were listening to the guidance to bring you here and that guidance is going to bring you anywhere you need to go it's always there for you it's always supporting you and right now like i've had so many things popping in 
just in the last couple of weeks, things lining up, just support coming from just unbelievable support from the universe and from people and um, you know it's it's there. And the gratitude is key because when you start really feeling into that gratitude, and the encouragement is really feel the gratitude, okay? Because sometimes we use our minds and we think things. I'm grateful. And that's good. That's a good start. It's a very good start. But when we start getting the emotions involved, so if you have a, like a gratitude affirmation, you can make it so much more powerful by really feeling that gratitude within you, taking the time to really, you know, start with like feeling what does gratitude feel like? And it's like a little exercise. You can, you can be still one night, one day or something and lie down and, and um, think of something you're extremely grateful for and really Pay attention to what that emotion feels like and that is the frequency of gratitude and you can learn you can train your body to respond to that frequency of gratitude if you, if you practice that I'm just kind of recording this on an everyday, every day, every day, and we're getting everyday noises behind us, and that's just fine because that's again coming back to perfection. Like if I waited until I had, oh, if you listen to the background right now, that's the cherry bee. It's absolutely beautiful. So if we waited until conditions were absolutely perfect for everything, it would never happen. Listen to that. I don't know if this phone is going to pick it up. I'm really hoping that that music comes through because it's. Look, look it up. I'll leave a link below to Tchaikovsky's Hymn of the Cherubim because it's absolutely out of this world. Um, but yeah, it's like you know, start where you start where you are. Maybe you're called to. Oh, start a business or something, you know, just follow the guidance. It'll show you what to do. It may show you what to do, or it may show you, the, you know, uh, bring you to a person that will help you and do it in a way that will work. Especially if it's something that's really been frightening you. If you're not sure exactly how it'll work, sometimes asking just to be connected to the right people at the right time in the right ways to assist, sometimes that's just the trick. Again, um, oh, the safety and this childlike innocence, because that's that's where I'm thinking of bison, buffalo. When there's danger, they put the children, the, the babies, in the middle, the young, and musk oxen do this too, and they protect them. And they just stand in a ring all around. So I'm feeling like that's what the Cherubim are doing with this guarding, the Garden of Eden. They're protecting, they're protecting the inner child. Because I'm getting a lot of inner child coming forward lately in, in a lot of ways. And how important that is, the ability to... Like children have a natural ability to play. The idea of play is so important. It's one of the keys to getting back to this beautiful existence. And that's what art is, is play. 
people get uptight when they, <laughs> you know, every time when I tell people an artist, I, the first thing most people say is like, oh, I can't draw. <laughs> like, of course you can draw. It, I mean, it doesn't have to look perfect. Yeah, every child can draw, right? Show me a two-year-old or, well, maybe, well, two-year-olds, yeah, but a yeah, four-year-old, right? They draw with abandon. They don't worry about it. And there's, you know, they look out. It's like, what? Look, look, look what I drew. Look, look at this. Look at this. And they're so excited. And they'll tell you about it. They'll tell you the stories about what it is. And sometimes those are like the angels speaking through them. But then they go to school and they get trained that what they're doing isn't good enough and they stop hearing the angels they stop seeing them and they stop drawing them or what is their drawing <laughs> and it's happened to most of us but we can go back there we can get it back This whole journey is about. And that's why, like, this whole idea of purification, purging, all that, it brings us back, it peels away the layers <laughs> to the inner child, and that's, you know, um, just, you know, letting go of all that stuff allows you in here. It almost looks like a seed opening. And that's the other thing that they've been asking me to relay is something to do with seeds and rooting. So I'm going to put a root in here. Because the connection with earth is so important. I've been getting a lot of just um, messages to ground lately, that grounding is very, very important for light workers right now, especially. Always, but right now. Sending down the root, sending down the root to Mother Earth, connecting with Mother Earth. It reconnects us to our pure essence. Nature purifies all the four elements. See the four faces, the four elements. They each purify in their own way. We have the element of air. And if you've ever been in a stuffy room and opened the window, you know how purifying <laughs> the element of air can be. And then the element of water, of course, washing. And the element of fire, very purifying too. But we don't always think of the element of earth as purifying, but it is. Earth, you know, think of um, a bee sting and putting clay on it and how that just leaches away the toxins. So every one of the elements has this purification element to it and connecting with nature, you're connecting with all four of those. Um, you know, we're, we're going back, going back to our roots, reconnecting.
other part of this is coming to center, right? And, and, and the stillness, because there's so much action around here. But there's that old saying, you can't fire, fight fire with fire. You can't advance into this. And without just being still, you've got to be still. Stillness is the only way you can get through here. I, that's what they're telling me. Is that when you become still, it's like you enter the heart. It's a portal to enter the, the heart without having to bypass all this stuff. And in the stillness, you can hear. They call it the still small voice for a reason. It's necessary to come to stillness. Our society does not value stillness very much. <laughs> but our ancestors did. So you can connect with the ancestors sometimes. They can help. I mean, I still remember how to sit still. Well, I do not know if this is done or not. I may go in after it dries and work on it more, but it feels like this video is done. <laughs> maybe not, maybe I'll just get a little more violet in there. Maybe violet is asking for violet before I leave. It's kind of reminding that the violet flame is available. And if you're not familiar with the violet flame, it's very easy, you just kind of visualize yourself in violet fire. And, and what that is, is it just transmutes. It's, a, a, it's like this pure grace kind of thing that there's a lot of ways you can use it, but um, it's grace. Because we aren't, you know, <laughs> spirit knows that we're not perfect, right? But, but that's why we have this, we, we can ask for grace. Because we are perfect, but we're not. Does that make sense? We're perfect in our imperfection. In our humanity. We're perfect in our humanity. We were given this grace in order to transcend what we're dealing with. I hear my dog. <laughs> Just being silent for a while. And some people would probably have dropped off getting bored with the silence. And that's okay. And maybe there's something better that they could have been doing right now. You know, but. I think really the big thing here is, you know, just 
being still enough to listen and being still enough to hear what we're being called for, called to do. And that it's probably closer than we think. In fact, it's right, you know, we're available. As, as a, as a, like as humanity itself, we've got everything that we need to create a beautiful, create beautiful lives for everybody on the planet. It wouldn't take a huge amount. It would just take, you know, take some slowing down and start considering, you know, what is it that we really want? And to take our power back as, as human beings. We can each do that. And what they're saying is like, we each need to do it as individuals, take our power back. And part of it is getting off that treadmill of gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Because you're gonna find as you slow down, you're gonna get more and more and more traction so that you will find things happen so easily without having to, you know, run ragged. And when a critical mass of individuals moves into that space, it opens up the doors for everybody. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some gold in here because I'm seeing this little child in the middle. Get some gold in. So I gotta go get a. Two beers. Is designer's gouache. It's uh, most watercolor is transparent, but this is really more opaque. This may not show up too well on the video, but the person it's going to be with this metallic gold. go in and put some iridescence in the rest of it as well. Right. Thank you for watching. If you've held out this long, I commend you. <laughs> and um, if you are interested in 
uh, working with me at all, I've got links below. I do give intuitive sessions there a little more. <laughs> I, I, I don't usually speak this slowly and it's just like it's, you know, I had to paint at the same time. But uh, definitely I offer healing sessions, uh, readings, as well as artwork. I'm working on getting my art side up and oracle cards. So I have a link to my spirit animal deck below. And I do want to send a big, big, big thank you to everybody who has signed up for sessions and, and purchased decks and so forth. Paintings that I do definitely appreciate that. And just wish you a beautiful day. And we'll catch you again later.